Another program that was trying to make their way back to mattering once again was Florida State University. They've done that going nine and three, winning five straight games after that Clemson loss, putting up historic numbers on the ground, rushing for over 200 yards in seven consecutive games for the first time uh, since 1987. They've got themselves potentially a Heisman candidate going into next season if, in fact, they already get their quarterback, Jordan Travis, back. Joining me to talk about big picture and the win over the weekend against Florida is Ira Chaffel, Warchant.com. Of course, the website. Go check out the best in Florida State Athletics at Warchant.com. Hello, Ira. How are you? Good, sir. I'm great, Jeff. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. All right, so I asked Eric McKinney this a moment ago because SC has been out of the limelight now. They're very much in the limelight. Florida State feels like they're knocking on the door to being a team in the limelight again with those five straight wins, sweeping the state rivals and doing better and better as we see offensively. They've got a guy, a quarterback, that the whole country will be talking about. What did the win over Florida on Friday night mean for Florida State? I think it meant a lot, you know, and it's funny, you know, some people looked at the celebration, the way the players celebrated, the way the the student body and a lot of the fans went on the field after the game to celebrate and looked at it like, well, why are you guys celebrating beating a six and six team uh, the way you are in Florida? But, you know, this, this season's really been about getting Florida state back to the point where they're not just competitive against their rivals, but actually beating some of the rivals. And they did that this year. They swept Florida and Miami, as you said. It's the first time Florida State's done that since 2016. Uh, they're state champions again, uh, self, self-proclaimed self state champions. I don't know if uh, UCF has anything to say about it, but, but Florida State beat both of the rivals. They played really well um, in some big games this season, finished 9-3. and three. It's their best record uh, in a long time. They're going to be going to a good bowl game. They haven't been bowl eligible the last few years. So it really was just it was a good punctuation uh, point on on what's been a very good bounce back season for this program. Again, you know, beating Florida isn't the biggest deal in the world when you look at them in the season they had, but it kind of finished the deal for this team that really, uh, you know, has turned around Florida State football. Well, if you think about it, Ira, too, they book in with SEC wins. You know, basically right. the first game was a warm-up game against basically a glorified high school. But that first real game is against LSU in New Orleans for fans that don't remember. Uh, go back to the start of the season. High-profile matchup, fun game. Florida State, LSU comes down to the last seconds, field goal, uh, extra point block, and Florida State gets that win. They couldn't have known it at the time, Ira, but LSU was going to go and, and be knocking on the door of the college football playoff. That's obviously off the table now that they got stomped by Texas A&M last night. But you think about that at the time. I don't think Florida State fans realized that that's how good this team could be, Florida State that is, and that's how good that LSU team was going to be. And now you conclude it, like you say, with these – Five straight victories, and even their losses, when you go back to the three-game losing streak, you look at a team like Clemson, for example, that game came down uh, till late in the fourth quarter. There are no bad losses on the resume for Florida State. I guess the next question is, you're right, they're going to go to a great bowl. Roster retention, you got a lot of guys people are going to wonder about. If Florida State's offense in particular comes back next year, you're going to have a lot of chatter about this being a top-10 offense with a Heisman candidate at quarterback. What are your thoughts on who goes and who stays, in particular the quarterback, Jordan Travis? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question. It really changes everything about their prospects for next season. If Jordan Travis does leave, uh, you know, and to test his, uh, you know, standing in the NFL, you know, they're going to have to really go out. They're probably going to have to go out and get a a high-profile transfer quarter, a transfer portal quarterback. You know, Tate Rodemaker played well in relief this year. I don't know that they could go into the offseason – um, is saying, okay, Tate, you're definitely our number one quarterback. They signed a highly touted freshman quarterback last year, A.J. Duffy. We didn't see anything during preseason or during this season in practices or when he got in games to say, oh, yeah, he's definitely ready to take the mantle. Uh, so I think if Jordan leaves, they're going to have to go out and get a portal quarterback. But the good news is I think they're, they'd be very attractive because you see a lot of the weapons they'd be bringing back. We fully expect Johnny Wilson to be back at wide receiver. Uh, you'd like to think Trey Benson at running back is going to be coming back. He's had, he had a nice year, but he hasn't played a ton of college football. He even said in the post-game press conference, I'm still young, and he is a young player. Uh, so they've got a lot of weapons coming back on the offense. Uh, if Jordan Travis comes back, though, like you said, yeah, man, it's it's the he's going to be one of the he's going to be one of the faces of college football going into next season. Uh, and I think there's a good chance he comes back. I mean, he's not a guy. He knows this. He's not a guy that's going to go to the NFL Combine or any of those, uh, you know, meat market kind of things, pro day, and just blow, co- uh, co- 
you know, NFL scouts away. He just doesn't have a huge arm. He doesn't have great measurables other than speed. And so, you know, there's going to be questions about whether or not he can play at that level. I don't think he would be a high draft pick this year. Now, if he comes back and has a, another huge year, then maybe that changes. So I think it'll be attractive to him to stay. Um, if he does, it's a big deal, man. Florida State will be a team that might be a top 10, top 15 team going into the next season. Yeah, final thing here, Ira, because Florida State, for those that don't know, have done a magical job of evaluating and convincing kids in the transfer portal to come to Florida State. Uh, for those that don't remember, again, Jermaine Johnson came from Georgia a year ago, and all he did was become all ACC and a first round draft pick, uh, was really one of the most dominant players in the league and one of the best defensive ends in the country. They had it at other positions, too. Kier Thomas did that. We saw it on Friday night, by the way. All of the positions that had a big impact, a lot of them were transfer players, including to some extent, Jordan Travis is a transfer player from Louisville. So, They've really been able to tap into that market. It's way programs can uh, dig their way out of hell. You saw it at Southern Cal, obviously. We just had Eric McKinney on. Those players, most of those players, including the best player, maybe in college football, all transfer portal guys. How much do you expect to see Florida State now hit the portal yet again for key positions, whether that be on the defensive line or linebacker, maybe even corner. They've got positions of need on that side of the ball, especially. What do you expect to see in the coming days as we inch closer to signing day? Yeah, Florida State's definitely been one of the big players in the transfer market, both for the last two seasons. The guys you mentioned, along with you know Jamie Robinson at safety, who's a first-team All-ACC guy, started his career at South Carolina. Fabian Lovett, their best defensive lineman, started his career at Mississippi State. So yeah, th this team has been built by transfers, and I think that's going to continue. Uh, I don't, that's not necessarily what any coach wants to say is their long term strategy. They all want to say they want to build through the high school ranks. But Florida State's still at a point where they're going to have to do a major job in the portal. You know, in, in probably number one position is going to be a defensive end again. As you mentioned, Jermaine Johnson two years ago uh, goes to become ACC Defensive Player of the Year, first round pick. This year, they got Jared Verse out of Albany, an FCS school, but everybody in the country wanted him. Florida State got him largely because of what they had done with Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas. And now Jared Verse, you know, if he's going to be a first round pick, which some people think, uh, then there's a good chance he's going to go. Now you're again, you're looking for another elite pass rusher. They've got some nice young talent on the defensive line, but they probably have to go in the portal one more year uh, at that position. I think linebacker could be a position, uh, and definitely in the secondary. Uh, I don't think there's any question. The secondary, Florida State's pass defense statistically looked pretty solid this year, um, but they did not have a good game on Friday against Florida. And and I think a lot of us think that they need to get better uh, back there. And they're going to lose Jamie Robinson, who's a you know one of the best safeties in the ACC, uh, and they might lose uh, another player or two in that secondary. So that's another position I think they're going to go hard after. Yeah, to your point, Ira, whenever Florida State's defense did face a, a plus offense, Clemson's offense, for example, or Wake Forest offense, obviously, and now Florida's offense, those might not be great teams, but they had pretty good offenses, especially on the days in which their quarterbacks played well. Florida State's defense didn't get stops the way you'd like to see. So it'll be interesting to see if they do tap into that transfer portal. Uh, final thing, I, I lied. I had one more. Uh, projected bowl, what are you hearing? Anything for Florida State fans out there watching this? Uh, obviously, go to warchant.com, follow along, make sure that you're watching what they do as signing day approaches. They'll have a bowl game this year to get ready for. Where do you think they play or what are you hearing? Yeah, I think there's a really good chance they'll stay in the state of Florida. All of the state bowls would love to have Florida State. The Orange Bowl would have loved to have had them if Clemson had gotten the playoff. Florida State would have been a huge draw to South Florida at the Orange Bowl. Uh, that's off the table now. But, you know, I think Orlando, the Cheez-Its Bowl, the Gator Bowl would love to have them. I don't know if they're – I think the Cheez-It Bowl is probably going to be the place um, just because I can't imagine them passing on the opportunity – to get a Florida State team that, you know, you just really expect to travel well because this has been their first bowl trip in a few years and their first kind of substantial bowl trip in, in, in since they went to the Orange Bowl in 2016. So uh, I think uh, my guess is that's where they'll end up. Ira, thanks for your time this morning, buddy. Appreciate it as always. For those who want to read more of Ira and the rest of the staff there at Warchant, go to warchant.com for the best of on three and the best of Florida State football coverage. Take care, buddy.